Hi there! Uh, welcome back. Uh, today I'll be talking about more about basic damage mechanics of this game, and today we'll be talking about damage things and tick delay, since someone uh, seemed to be curious about that. Uh, I know Rukon did make a video about it, but whatever. I don't care anymore, cause I fucking feel like it. Uh, let's make a platform again, just like last time. Oh. oh, okay, I'm fucking retarded, give me a sec. Okay, so, uh, let's do a little review of what I talked about last time. Alright, so I said damage spreads to connected parts, right? And uh, you remember you remember how ticks work? I'm not sure if you did. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my video. Because if not, you don't belong here. Uh, let's do this for the sake of colors. You remember ticks, right? No. Uh, so I'm gonna first talk about how damage uh sinks work. So damage sinks usually uses a high HP component. Uh, a lot of the time people use mega plates. However, for the sake of convenience and smaller scale builds, I'll be using mini plates, which are these two small plates. And struts. Those are the two types I'll be using for now. So let's first talk about how a damage sink works. Uh, so we have a weapon here, and what I'm going to do is basically put a uh, mini plate directly on the mount of the uh, tier zero SMG. So, this is not the only option, but for now, let's use this example. Actually, let's do this. So, what, what I'm doing here is when this gun gets shot out, uh, not just this gun gets destroyed, right? So, once a gun is destroyed, the leftover damage will spread into the body. I feel like that should be pretty self-explanatory if you played this game for like more than like 3 hours. Uh, however, by uh, attaching a mini plate right here, what you're doing is soaking all that leftover damage into this mini plate. So without this mini plate, uh, when the damage comes through this gun, it should spread like this, and like this, and like this, right? However, by adding a uh, mini plate right here, uh, you can... Uh, I'm not saying this is guaranteed this much decrease. However, uh, Generally, it will usually decrease by this much. I actually made a video titled Mini Plate Damage Sync. And if you look at that video, which I will link in the uh, comment and the description, uh, if you take a look at the video, you will see what I'm talking about. Alright, so that's basically how damage syncs work. So the downside to using single mounted damage syncs like mini plates uh, is because. Uh, when this part gets destroyed, this is also destroyed, right? It doesn't mean that this will be a crit, because uh, it's on one tick from this cube. However, what the issue here is that uh, whether the uh, amount of damage is completely uh, taken up by the sink or not, it will. This part will get destroyed. So let's say, just theoretical, let's say, theoretically, let's say this mini plate has 50 HP. And 100 damage comes in through the gun. And let's say the gun has a, uh, let's say it has 10 HP and this cube has 10 HP. I know it's not the case, but let's just use that as an example. So it's 10 HP through here, which is 90 HP left, right? And then 80 HP left, and then now there's 70 HP left, right? Uh, wait, actually, hold on. Let me let me rephrase this. Sorry. Let's say that. 50 damage comes in. 50, 50. So 10 HP, 10 HP, 50 HP. And then 50 damage comes in, right? So 10 HP, so that's 60 HP more. Oh no, that's 40, uh, 40 damage left since uh, 50 damage minus 10, so 40 damage left. And then minus 10, so 30 damage left. And then this will soak up the rest of the damage, right? However, the I, like I mentioned before, this mini play has 50 HP. Uh, but this mini plate will still get destroyed, meaning that the uh, leftover health of 20 HP 
will result in a minor crit. This is the downside to having a uh, single mounted uh, damage things as the if the mount is destroyed then the entire thing is destroyed. Now this is where a strut can uh, benefit. Uh, I would typically use like uh, one of this one uh, tier 3 strut, tier 3 strut short or tier 3 strut plus. One of these three is the best option in my opinion. So let's just use this for now. When you do this, this strut has two connection points, right? Meaning that a dual mount is not necessary to keep this part from falling off. So let's say that this strut has 50 HP and then this is 10 and 10 like I said before. So 48 damage left, 30 damage left, and then there's third uh and then there's 30 damage gets uh, all shoved into this strut, right? However, like I said before, the strut has 50 HP. And now that 30 HP has been crammed in here, however, uh, but the mount, the strut is still attached to a different part of the body via this, uh, like, part right here. Meaning that this strut, instead of getting destroyed completely, it will, uh, absorb only the damage that it has to, meaning that this strut will stay in contact with 20 HP left. Uh, in this theoretical situation, of course, the strut has more HP than that, it has, like, uh, 1400, uh, 44400. No, 14400, sorry. 14400, uh, what is it? HP, le HP, but for the sake of the video, like I said, uh, this strut will not get destroyed, which means that no crits will be involved. This is the, uh, upside to using a strut. So why shouldn't we only use struts? Uh, that's actually what I would say the reason to be is, uh, the HP per component, I guess. Uh... So as you can see here, it's uh, around 15,000, right? Around 15,000. And this component actually has four, around 46,000. Meaning that uh, when the damage coming in is greater through this gun, uh, more damage can be absorbed by this uh, mini plates than the strut. Meaning that less damage will be inputted into your body. Uh, into the bot's body. And also, other than that, these mini plates actually fit wonderfully uh, inside bots. As you can see, you see this bullshit? Yeah, this is completely legal. I'm not sure if it shoots through. I'm pretty positive that it shoots through. And there's also this. This is also completely legal, meaning that this is something like this. And I said before that uh, it doesn't have to be directly on the gun mount, right? It can be somewhere like along the path that it spreads into like this or something like this so if the damage gets spread here like this like this and then like this uh and like that even if you do something like this even if it's like really far away until the damage uh because the damage mechanics in this game Spread the damage until all the damage is absorbed into the bot. Uh, this mini plate will absorb the thing nonetheless. However, it's best if you put the damage the closest to the thing that you want to absorb damage from. Uh, now, there is one occurrence of a damage thing that you should avoid. is having a single uh, disconnected cube. Uh, away from the uh, damage thing. So if you do this, the damage will go from here and to here. And to here, right? And then once these are destroyed, instead of absorbing the damage, the, instead of the mini plate absorbing the damage, it will just crit off. It will not absorb any damage as it, this, uh, this is the maximum, uh, one tick, like zero tick, one tick is the maximum that a uh, damage can spread to a disconnected cube. Well, a, a cube that is attached by only this, only the damage input cube. So that is a basic of how damage things work. Now let's learn tick delays. Uh, now ticks. Uh, you already know how ticks work, right? I explained in the previous video. Uh, rods typically uh tend to spread damage faster. Uh, you can actually abuse this or utilize this to your advantage. 
But what you want to do is uh, delay the damage that will go into your uh, weapons. Kind of like something like this, I guess. And then uh, let's dual mount this uh, SMG to the back of the bot. So this is now this SMG is now dual mounted to the front and the back, right? So the tick delay here, what will happen here is, uh, let's say uh, you can actually mix the damaging, but actually let's do no damaging first. So let's say you get you got damage from here. Uh, actually, let's add like a layer here. Uh, let's say you got damage right here. Uh, damage will spread like this and like this. And then while it rides uh, this little path until it gets there, dam uh, the because uh, each cube is connected like directly to each other, uh, and every time a cube is connected, uh, it will spread damage even more if that makes sense because more uh, connection is happening. How do I say this? So from here to here, it's only connected by one cube. So th this is the only cube that will absorb the damage. However, from here, it's going into two different directions. And this is happening for uh, several different spots. And as the damage spreads, it will absorb it more and more. Uh, meaning that uh, this delay, uh, most likely, by the time it reaches the yellow blocks, hopefully, because your bot will be three-dimensional, because uh, like this and like this and so on, hopefully by the time the yellow block is reached, all the damage has been uh, will be would have been absorbed into your bot's body, meaning that your gun is not preserved because the tick actually is on the yellow block right now, right? But look at how much damage spread from this single cube, uh, compared to how much damage was inputted closest to the gun. You see this? So this is what's happening. This is the tick delay. The, the damage is you're delaying the damage being inputted into a certain desired part most likely a weapon or a movement part, internalized or externalized, it does not matter. Uh, so what's happening there is that you're delaying the damage that will go into your preferred part by uh, increasing the tick that is required to reach that uh, component. Uh, one simplest form of doing this is prism weaving. Uh, I know prism weaving has been it's probably a very widely known technique. So what prism weaving is doing, you get these edges, uh, people call it prisms, and basically doing this. Uh, let me set it up real quick. This is prism weaving. So it said that your damage gets put into here. Wait, uh, it said that your damage is put into here. Then instead of going directly behind here, it's like simply, uh, it's going like this and then like this. So to get to a cube like all the way back here, like let's say you have a weapon right here. Instead of going one, two, and three, it will have to go uh, like this, like this, like this, and then like this, and like this. This is prism weaving. Basically this pattern. However, should you spam this prism? No, because this actually ruins the integrity of your bot, meaning that less cues will be connected to each other. This means that your although your damage will spread slower, it means that the possibilities of all your connections being destroyed and parts critting off increases significantly. It increases significantly. So what I would recommend doing is prism weaving only at like the front two layers of your bot, two to three layers at the front of your bot. Okay, so now let's mix up uh, tick delays and uh, damage things. So let's do this and then like this. Of course, this bot is uh, this shape is not very desirable, but let's just deal with it for now. So, right now, instead of uh, it's the same concept as earlier, except now you are uh, instead of 
expecting that the damage will spread into your uh, into different parts of your bot, you are now expecting the damage to uh, basically spread into this damage sink. Uh, and yeah, that's actually about it. You can uh, I feel this should be self explain uh, like this should be enough of an explanation if you've actually paid attention to what I've been saying. As you can see, tick delay is saving the gun because this mini plate is absorbing all the damage. And yeah, that's about it for the uh, how tick delay and damage uh, sinks work. And next time in the video, uh, in my triforcing or well, the basic damage mechanic video, I'll be teaching you guys how to make a basic core. Uh, and by basic core, we will be using something like a fairly like small hover, like something like this, as an example for the sake of my mental health, I guess, because this something like this is just easier to triforce, I guess, for me. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, uh, comment down below. And I linked the EP Discord last time, so check that out, please. Come here and come in and get advice if you need it. Because if you, I, I'm not a one man dictionary. I'm not an encyclopedia for Robocop damage mechanics. So yeah, join, ask questions, and myself and other people will more, be more than glad to. Uh, answer your things. Alright, well then, uh, until next time, see ya guys!